Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I do hope that you're doing well and staying safe out there. And uh, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate uh, hanging out with you guys here every week, making videos and kind of having fun conversations in the comments about photography. And by the way, if you're new here, I'm Jim. It's great to meet you. I make tutorial videos here every week, showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. I'm in Luminar 4 today. And um, in this one, I've got a couple of Milky Way, starry sky, night sky kind of shots. And I'm gonna edit those. I've had people ask me before, hey, will you do videos about how you would edit those in Luminar? And the truth is I didn't really have any to work with until I went to Colorado uh, just uh, back in August. And so one night we went out and stayed up kind of late and uh, shot the Milky Way and the starry sky. And it was gorgeous. I mean, just absolutely stunning. Like I'd never seen that many stars. I live in a city. When I travel, I'm in cities. It's just difficult for me to get to see this kind of stuff. So I was floored. Um, and I did find a way to uh, edit the photos. And admittedly, uh, I'm not an astrophotographer. I've, I've got very little experience. I've done this two or three other times, uh, just kind of briefly. So my photos are not that great. This is really just about how I'd approach the editing and not kind of bragging about, look at the great shot I took. Uh, one of them is actually not super focused. Um, I had trouble, honestly, in low light, trying to get the focus right. It, it's a challenge. Hey man, we're all trying to learn, right? And I've got more to learn. So anyway, here's the photo. I've done nothing to it. Um, and, and honestly, these edits are fairly simple. I've got two different photos. I need to hurry up and stop uh, stop talking and start editing. Uh, the first thing I would probably do is just put on the temperature. My personal opinion is um, I kind of prefer a bluer sky. This is personal preference, um, as is really all editing. But I mean, that color to me, it's kind of yellowy and kind of blah and uh, all that. I just think it looks a whole lot better when it's blue. So that's the first thing I would do. I did shoot this with this thin line of mountains there uh, because I was gonna create more of a silhouette. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go add some contrast to it to kind of bump up the difference between um, the, the brighter and the darker parts um, of the image. Um, next, I'm gonna take the highlights up. And so I actually wanna increase the highlights, which is not something I do very often in my photos, but um, all those little uh, stars, right? I was gonna say those little pricks of light, uh, they're stars. I just wanna make sure that I continue to see them as I edit the photos. So I'm bumping that up to continue uh, or to maintain that visibility, but I'm gonna pull shadows down a little bit. Uh, and then I go into advanced settings. And once again, I'm gonna pull whites up just like I did um, the, uh, the highlights and I'm gonna pull blacks down and I gotta check my notes here. Something about like that. So there's my photo so far. So let me show you where I started like that. Really too yellow for me, just not a color that I'm interested in or like. Um, and my current state, which I like a whole lot better. Now I'm gonna pop over to the uh, Pro Tools and I'm gonna go into Advanced Contrast. Now I don't recommend Highlights Contrast because you do that and it sort of dulls the highlights, which I just spent trying to increase on the previous one. So I'm gonna go a little bit of Midtones Contrast and a little bit of shadows contrast as well. Just creating a little bit more contrast in the image. So before and after, not a significant difference, but that's okay. I'm gonna move on to adjustable gradient. And the first thing I'm gonna do is set the orientation. And I'm gonna put this down here kind of on the horizon line. So I wanna get that kind of low, something about like that, and say done. And of course, I'm primarily gonna be working on the top of the image here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pull the exposure down a little bit, like maybe 25 or 30. It was still a little bit bright for me. Um, I'm gonna take those highlights and I'm gonna go up again. I just wanna keep those uh, those star, you know, those little pinpricks of light um, looking good. And then in the bottom, I'm gonna take the, uh, the shadows down a little bit. So something about like that. Um, so let me show you this tool. There's before and after, not a massive difference. And the last thing I do is I go back to the first tab and I get AI Enhance and actually take AI Accent and I'm pulling that up a fair amount, like maybe 40 or 50, something like that. It's not what uh, I would intuitively do on a night shot because it has a tendency to brighten things. But if you look at the before and after, I think it actually did a really good job of kind of evening it out, the light. Um, and I think the photo looks pretty good. There's the before and there's the after. And if you do the sliding scale, uh, oops, uh, not trying to zoom in. If you do the sliding scale and look at the difference, you can see it's massive. Now, the next step you need to do is go do noise reduction. And my preferred tool for that is Topaz Denoise. I've got a video I just did about that. 
Um, it's a great tool. That's my preferred tool. Um, it's an AI-based denoise tool. It's really fantastic. That's what I would do next. But that's the full edit for this photo. I'm going to go grab another one and show you what I'll do on that other photo. Okay, here we are. Some similar starting points. And this one, I've got a really nice center area. I love that. I've got a, uh, a shooting star here. I've got one there. This was actually during the Perseid meteor shower. There's another one over there. We saw some really big ones fly by, but of course, my camera was pointing the other direction at the time. So um, that's kind of how the cookie crumbles. Um, again, I'm going to go kind of like 3,600 here, just trying to get uh, a little blue, maybe a little bit more, maybe like 35 or 34 or something, something like that. I'm going to take the tint a little bit to the right. I'm trying to amp up some of those colors that are kind of in the center, and I've got a couple of specific things I'm going to do that I'll show you for that. Uh, smart contrast is going up mid-40s, and here, um, you know, I definitely, again, got a little bit of a silhouette. I'm amping up the contrast, but I'm going to do some, some hopefully fun stuff there in the center. Highlights are going up by about 25 Again, don't want to lose those pinpricks of light. And also the whites are going up also about 25. Let me show you where we started. And there's the base photo unedited, and there's the current state. So a pretty significant change, mostly around the temperature uh, that you can tell so far. But now I'm going to go get AI structure. And I'm actually going to, um, if you look at that center section, I feel like it needs a little structure. So I'm actually going to bump up AI structure. I just don't want it to apply to the whole photo. So I'm going to get a radial mask and I'm going to drag that over here. I'm going to hit invert because I only want it to apply to the area that I care about. Uh, oops, let me see. I need to get this radial mask much more elliptical shaped. And then uh, let's see, I need to turn it kind of like that. Uh, I'm going to expand that a little bit, pull this in so that, oops, so that gradient zone is not quite so big, something about like that. Um, and, you know, maybe I'll tilt it a little bit more, but you can kind of get the idea. I'm isolating that area and applying the AI structure to that. And all I'm really trying to do, I might actually go a little bit higher. I'm just trying to create a little bit of crispiness. That's probably the wrong word. Just, um, well, a little bit of structure, almost like clarity, just a little bit of pop there in that center. So if I turn it off, you can see it's a little fuzzier. And when I turn it back on, you can see it has a little bit more character, a little bit more texture. Maybe that's the word. And that's kind of what I'm looking to do because I want to amplify that section of the photo. Now, once again, I'm going to pop over to the uh, Pro tab here. I'm going to get Color Enhancer. And I'm going to go straight into the Color Balance section at the bottom. So for the uh, starting in Shadows, I always start Shadows and then just follow it across Midtones and Highlights. Uh, the first one, I'm going to leave it zero. I'm going to go slightly to the left on the magenta green and slightly to the right on the yellow blue. As you can see, that's creating a little bit darker blue there in the night sky, which I think looks good. Midtones, I actually skip entirely. And highlights, I'm kind of doing the opposite. I'm going with about a 10 here in, towards the red and about a, a negative 11 towards the magenta. Uh, and that's in the highlights. So that's kind of popping some of that color there in that center area. So let me show you the before. There it is before color balance and after. There it is. A little bit darker, richer blues and a little bit more pop of that kind of magenta color that's in that core central part of the photo. Okay, and the last thing is I'm going to split toning and in the highlights, I'm going to leave the hue at zero. I'm going to take the saturation to into like the 50s or something. So something about like that. Uh, but once again, I'm going to get a radial mask and I'm going to put it on this core area that I want to have an impact on. So like that, but again, I need to invert it. Um, and then I want to change the shape a little bit. Let's see here. Let me pull this side in, uh, expand the size of that, expand the size of that. You know, radial masks are kind of hard to mess with when you're also trying to like record a video. Um, so something about like that. All I'm trying to do is pop a little bit of color there. You can see the mask, it's something about like that. Uh, and you know, I might play with it a little bit more, but again, the point here was just pop a little bit more of that color right there in that core central area, especially where it's kind of kind of fat right in here in the lower part of that. So let me show you the on and off of this one. There it is before, not a lot of color, it's kind of wasted. And after, now a lot more of that pink, which I think looks pretty cool. You can adjust the saturation to your liking, of course. 
um, and frankly, you can adjust adjust the hue to your liking. I kind of like it having a little bit more of that pink. I think it really pops. But that's the edit, my friends. There's the before and the after. And again, if I do this sliding window, you can see how far we've come. Added a little bit of structure and some color to really focus in on that core central area. And I think it's really popping. Again, the only other thing I would do here and I recommend doing is go add some some denoise AI from Topaz. Again, my personal favorite for denoising. But feel free to use the denoise in Luminar if you like or Lightroom or whatever other product you use. But that's a, hopefully a couple of ideas about editing Milky Way photos in Luminar and some steps I would take. And every photo is going to be a little bit different, but I hope to have given you some ideas, maybe some things you can try on your own photos. And I do hope it helps, my friends. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate that very much. I'll see you soon with more videos. You guys take care of yourselves out there and adios.